Hello guys and welcome to a new video. If you've seen the last episode you already know that I've started to build a new workshop from around the 3rd of January this year onward and that workshop is now at least halfway operational. So I'm getting back at you know catching up with older projects that I always wanted to finish but just couldn't in the old workshop because of the humidity of the lack of space and well First and foremost, because it was such an uncomfortable place that it was really hard to do focused electronics work. And that really was a mistake, but I'm really trying to, well, make up for that. And the one project that I really want to finish is the washing machine motor robot, because it brings everything together that this channel is about. Power electronics, especially DC to DC converters, we'll talk about inverters, about motor drivers, about charging batteries, and so many different things that are of interest to my viewer base, I think. Now, what happened so far, and let me, me kind of catch up on that here on camera, is that I built a steel frame. I attached two washing machine motors to those. I slightly modified the enclosures of those motors to fit on the steel frame. And then I'm using the original belts to drive two hand truck wheels via two, uh, well, just plastic rollers, plastic wheels that I attach to them. Now, you can watch that video in my back catalog. It has around 1.1 million views. Certainly one of the more popular videos that I made at the end of 2017. And uh, I was actually planning to finish this project in 2018, but for set reasons, I just couldn't do that. And what I'm starting to do now is to expand the steel frame. Now, the original steel frame was just barely enough to hold the motors and the wheels together. And right now I'm expanding that and building something like a cube. And the insides of the cube will be filled with the batteries and some of the power electronics required to drive the robot. Now I'm just using square steel tubes and um, welding them together with a TIG welder. And for now I'm even using a piece of OSB as like a base plate where I can install stuff on. Now later I will have all this ha be metal because I don't want to have wood in a robot. I just don't like the idea of that. <laughs> but for now it's what I have at hand. Now the next step is a quite different one. Now I have made a bunch of videos on these let's call them German or European style washing machine motors. They are essentially big universal motors but their field coils can be powered separately from the actual armature which makes them basically separately excited DC motors. So they can be powered from AC or from DC and because this is a battery powered application DC is what I'm going for and you can also find a video in my back catalog. It's called Inside a Washing Machine Motor. It has also been watched about half a million times. And there I kind of explained the different modes in which a motor like this can be powered and, and, and driven. And as I have shown in that video, you normally have this weird connector on the back side of the motor, but I already kind of hacked that and just connected the two blue wires directly to the field coil and these two brown wires directly to the motor brushes, which then lead via the commutator to the armature. So blue, field coil, brown, armature. And what I have to do is to put a constant current DC through the blue wires to the field coil, which will equate to a very low voltage, around 10 volts or so, or even lower than that. And then I will attach a adjustable voltage source to the armature, to the brown wires, and that is how I control the speed and the rotational direction of the motor. And you might also remember my self-made lab power supply and believe it or not, it was part of a greater plan. It has three out, uh, independent outputs and I made that so that I could control motors like this uh, in experiments here with this bench power supply. So what I'm doing is that I connect the two blue wires, the field coil, to a buck converter that will work in a current limit mode. And then I will control the motor via the two brown wires, via the large linear regulator that goes up to around 30 or 40 volts. But in order to reverse the rotational direction, I also need an H bridge. 
And when we talk about age bridges, we find several models on the market. Now, one that many of you probably know is this rather cheap one here uh, based on the L298. And this is a double age bridge and you can get these, I think, for as little as two euros or something like that. I bought five for 15, so that would be three euros. But the problem is with these that they are just too weak for this application. Now, here is another model that I found about two years ago. It's based on the BTS 7960B. And this is a circuit built for automotive applications. And it's really great. This module here, uh, I order them from China. They cost around six euros. They usually take two weeks to come here. I will post a link uh, um, in the comment section if you're interested in that. And these accept up to, I think, 30 volts. After that, there will be a over voltage lockout and they can switch up to 43 amps. And they already have the gate driver circuit built inside and really everything you need. What you can see here is that it has this green clamp here and that is where you can attach the, it says B plus and B minus and that means plus and minus pull of the voltage source, for example, a car battery and then you have M plus and M minus. Th that is where you can connect a DC motor and that is where I connect the armature of the washing machine motor. Now we have eight more pins and Conveniently on the top of the or on the top side of the PCB it is labeled what these are VCC that's a supply voltage GND ground then you have IRS and LIS and that is for current sensing as far as I know but you really don't need them in most applications then you have REN that's enable and left enable so what you have to do you have to give this thing a supply voltage but only if the battery supply voltage isn't uh, higher than 12 volts or something like that already. So if you connect this to a 12 volt battery on the M plus M minus uh, pins, for example, you don't even have to have a VCC, uh, VCC connected to anything. Then you have ground, of course, then R enable and L enable. You just have to pull those to logic one uh, to enable the two half bridges. And then you can just control this thing via the RPWM pulse with modulation and LPWM uh, left pulse with, uh, with modulation pins. You can just pull these up with an Arduino to plus five volts. So what I'm doing in this experiment is to power the armature with around 30 volts because that's about the max what this power supply can do and what the H bridges can handle. And at the same time I'm trying to determine a good operating point for the field current in the field coil. Now what is happening is that the H switch turns on for two seconds, which should mean that the motor spins up for two seconds, then it shuts off, meaning that the motor should slow down. Then it waits for five seconds for the motor to come to a halt. Then it starts again, but this time reverses the polarity for two seconds, then waits five seconds again and so on. So what we should see is clockwise rotation, motor sh uh, shuts off, then counterclockwise rotation and so on and so forth. But what we can see is that the motor spins up easily in one direction, shuts off, but then doesn't really want to rotate in the other direction. And what I'm doing is to, well, incrementally step up the field current until the motor shows the same behavior in both directions. And that is what I have done now. So we're at a constant 3 amps of field current now and we can see a much more stable behavior in the two different rotational directions. The initial current spike is still a little higher with the counterclockwise rotation that's going to happen now. It's going you know, up to around 2 amps while it's only going to 1.5 in the, at the spike in uh, clockwise rotation. But after that it stabilizes at a few hundred milliamps in both directions. At 3 amps the field winding gets slightly warm. So what I'm doing now is to try to do this with the robot itself. I'm connecting the two armatures in parallel and connecting the two field coils in series and we'll then supply them with a buck converter so that three to four amps are flowing and well let's just see what happens. Yes, this is actually 
a very cool moment for me. It's nice to see that uh, the motors are able to spin at the same speed and torque in both directions, which didn't work at all when the field current was too low. And also 30 volts DC of supply voltage are enough to drive these motors, well, at least to move the robot around, even though they were designed for 230 volts AC. Now one of the next steps, of course, is to step up that voltage significantly, but that also means that we will have to build better H-bridges because these off-the-shelf H-bridges cannot handle 200 volts, for example. But there is another big problem here. The robot can't steer at all at the moment. That's because two of the wheels are just fixed in place and that is what I'm going to change now. So when I made the first video about this project, it was really all about conveying the power from the washing machine motors to the hand truck wheels and back then I didn't really care about steering because if the actual well drivetrain idea wouldn't work then anything else would also be in vain and because of that reason I just fixed two additional hand truck wheels in place and I'm removing them now and I'm replacing them by these large cast iron caster wheels that will just move along with the two drive wheels and and when then the two motors get their own H bridges and can be controlled individually then we can use a steering method called differential steering that is often used in electronic robots and in case it doesn't work with the two wheels I have also made a few mounting holes here in the middle so that it could work on three wheels, just like robotic vacuums, for example. So at least my first impression is that with the two caster wheels the robot is actually quite maneuverable and if we could now control the speed and direction of the two drive wheels individually with two individual H bridges controlled by a microcontroller the robot would be able to steer around almost any given obstacle. But I think it needs a little more traction because sometimes the wheels make not enough contact with the floor and for that I would like to add some weight. But in order to drive the robot with the additional weight we need more supply voltage and that is why I have to work on a step up converter next that will convert maybe 12 or 24 volts from a battery to 200 or 300 volts DC. So. Is it really hard to get like two or three hundred volts DC from a 12 volt source like a lead acid battery? Well, it is and it isn't. If you wanted to build a converter like that yourself, it is kind of hard. I might still do that though. But there is one way to do that that is actually kind of cheap. Like for example, this is a 300 uh, watts uh, car inverter that you can buy for I think like 30 bucks or something. And well, some of you might wonder now, Dude, you just told us that you want to have DC, but an inverter puts out AC, so what's that good for? Well, it's actually kind of simple. You put in your uh, 12 volts DC, it'll give out 230 volts uh, AC, and if you then just rectify the output, uh, you will get a DC again, and that will be around 325 volts DC, because that's uh, 230 volts, that's the RMS value, you have to multiply that by the square root of 2, that's 1.41, and that's around 325 volt DC, uh, at least if you charge it onto a capacitor again, and that is what you want to do. You could then uh, use a MOSFET, for example, to just chop that uh, into a smaller average voltage and drive a motor with that, for example. 
Now that's actually a kind of a stupid solution. The smarter solution would be to uh, just bypass the actual inverter circuit. Now what do I mean by that? Now let's take a look at this circuit board here from inside this car inverter. Now it operates not on a single but a, a dual, a two-stage design. Now this ferrite core here, this ferrite car transformer is part of, I think in this case it's a push-pull converter. Now the push-pull converter, sim similar to like the buck and the boost converter, is a switching converter that is often used in switch mode power supplies. This is not a switch mode power supply, but it is a circuit based on switching converters, just like a switch mode power supply is. A switch mode power supply rectifies the mains voltage and then it uses some kind of isolating switching converter like the push-pull converter to create um, normally a DC lower than the voltage of uh, the mains. In this case it works a little different. You take in 12 volt DC and then you have a push-pull converter or sometimes um, a half bridge converter or a full bridge converter which will then step up that voltage to in this case around 325 volts DC which is then charged to this electrolytic capacitor here. And the output, the actual AC, is then generated by another H bridge or full bridge that are just those four MOSFETs here who will uh, chop that voltage off and invert that periodically. So if you just take the voltage from this capacitor here and just bypass this output uh, H bridge here or full bridge, you will just get your 325 volts DC from this circuit here. And that is something that you could do, for example, if you don't want to or are not capable of designing a switching converter like that yourself. So what is going to happen next then? Well, a lot of things have to happen. For one, I have to either reuse one of those converters from uh, one of those car inverters or build one of those step-up converters myself. Then I will have to custom build, I think, uh, at least two high voltage, high current H bridges. And also there will be some more tests required with a washing machine motor. That is where the motor test stand uh, comes into play again to find out where the optimal operating point for these washing machine motors actually is. So just like the uh, bench power supply that we used in this video where I told you they actually built that thing for the very purpose of driving these motors. I put at least as much work into reverse engineering and repairing these motor test stands to be able to actually do a load tests on these uh, motors. So a lot of the work from the last two years actually went into you know building a kind of uh, support structure that this whole robot thing con could run on. So I know that from the outside a lot of what I did in the past seems like chaos, but it's actually part of a bigger plan uh, that is just a very complicated plan. <laughs> and uh, I'm not yet sure which of these steps I will take next, but I want to do it soon and you will hear more of this robot. I hope that you're interested in this as well and well, see you soon guys.